Did you miss your deadline to renew your Medicaid coverage? You can still send your completed annual review form to Healthy Connections Medicaid. You may be assigned to another health plan, but you can ask to come back to First Choice within 60 days of renewed Medicaid eligibility. It's your family. It's your choice. First Choice is the right choice. Renew and choose us. Visit selecthealthofsc.com slash renew to learn more. Don't get your tinsel in a tangle. Plato's Closet in North Charleston and West Ashley can help make your holiday easier with cash for clothes. Sell us your gently used trendy styles to earn cash on the spot. We need your denim, dressy clothes, sweaters, boots, and more. Plato's Closet buys and sells sustainable styles. Earn cash to make holiday spending less stressful. Don't get your tinsel in a tangle this year. Simply get cash for your cool clothes at Plato's Closet. Plato's Closet, located in West Ashley on Sam Rittenberg Boulevard and North Charleston on Rivers Avenue. Well, hello, my paranormal peeps, and welcome back to another Deep Woods Paranormal Podcast. My name is Matt Harvey. I am the host of the Deep Woods Paranormal Podcast. I am also the founder and lead investigator with Deep Woods Paranormal. Uh, my wife and I investigate everything paranormal, be it Bigfoot, UFOs, cryptids, uh, strange lights, lake monsters, river monsters. Uh, if it's paranormal in nature, we investigate it. We also help people in their homes. We do not charge for our services. Um, if you look in, if you're looking at the lighting, it is a little bit different. It's a little harder to see, um, but I've changed the lighting so it's a little bit more above me. Uh, I'm trying to get rid of the glare from the from the uh, window but there just doesn't seem to be any way to get rid of it my face is a little bit more lit up so you guys can see me a little bit better anyways today we're going to talk about some cryptids um lake monsters being cryptids and it's one of my favorite cryptids i like to talk about uh, a lot of people have asked me hey what's your favorite cryptid probably bigfoot but uh, you know dog man lizard man all, all those things fascinate me moth man um almost every cryptid fascinates me um, so you can kind of see the Loch Ness Monster down the left corner here. I don't know what this thing is. This is Dog Man here. This is possibly Wizard Man or El Chupacabra. And of course, right here, you possibly have a Bigfoot. So anyways, let's share my screen and we'll go to get into this. Just a disclaimer, these videos, if you see any videos on here on any of our podcasts, unless I specifically say they're ours, they're not ours. We are sharing other people's videos. We are giving them credit down below. If you guys want to go check out their stuff uh, or, or visit these sites, the links will be at the very bottom of the description. Our links are up at top uh, to our YouTube page, which you might already be on if you're not listening. If you're not watching this, uh, you might be on the on the audio podcast, listening to the audio podcast. If you'd like to view the podcast, uh, go free. Feel free to go on to the um, website, our website, uh, it has both our YouTube channel, it has our audio podcasts, and it has a whole lot more. Um, I'm going to talk about Manscaped real quick. This thing, it loves to block this out. Okay. Even when it's, it's in there, it's not in there. Okay. Let me move the mic just a little bit. All right. So I talked about this yesterday. I'm going to talk about it again. Let me turn it the other way. Um, this is called Manscaped. This is from manscaped.com. Of course, the link's down below. It's called Crop Preserver. And uh, essentially what this product does, I'm supposed to hold this up. Uh, essentially what this product does, you can see the whole bottle. It's a nice little bottle. Uh, not a, don't need a whole lot to uh, essentially uh, cover down there. Um, it could work for women too, just FYI. Um, this is on manscaped.com. If you go on there, put in the uh, discount code DWP. And uh, you'll get a discount on anything you buy. So they send us a whole lot of stuff. I'm just talking kind of about crop preserver this week. Um, it's kind of like a, a deodorant for down there. Uh, it works really, really well. I'm really happy with it. Um, you know, because I, I work long hours. I work sometimes 12, 13, 14 hours a day um, before I can catch a shower. And so, um, you know, this stuff's nice it keeps me uh clean and dry down there and then also keeps me 
Um, not smell, smelling terrible. Um, I'm trying to keep that G rated. Anyways, let's get into the cryptic creatures. So let's talk about these guys. So these are different. I'm going to share my screen with you. I think. <laughs> All right. This is our YouTube channel. We just uploaded the Bigfoot only podcast yesterday. I'm going to put this mic back in front of me so you can hear me. Um, one thing I do need to do in case there's some volume with these videos, I'm going to turn the audio back up. I apologize. For some reason, yesterday, the Bigfoot podcast, um, the audio, when that one scream happened, didn't come through. Everything else came through, but the scream. So strange. So anyways, all right, we didn't come here to see our Deep Woods Paranormal page. We came here to see some cryptids. So let's talk about some cryptids. And everybody knows I have a thing for the Loch Ness Monster. Excuse me as I rub my eyes real quick here. Um, the Loch Ness Monster has always fascinated me. I've, you know, as a kid, I saw stories about it back in the early 80s growing up. We had all those shows, you know, that were basically, they were kind of real almost. They they didn't really hide a whole lot. They weren't trying to prove or disprove anything. They were just showing you, here's the story, you know what I mean? And that's what I liked about those old shows. Um, it's been a monster quest. It's been on unsolved mysteries uh and sightings and a few other shows back in those days um nowadays i mean things are a little bit different they try and glorify the creature and make it look like it's it's more real than maybe it is so again you got to take this with a grain of salt all of these creatures i'm about to talk about i've never personally seen one okay so but i've been to loch ness and i found it fascinating that the lock next to the ocean. <laughs> so maybe these things aren't always in the locks. Maybe sometimes they swim out into the ocean and then come back in. Now up in Alaska, in the ocean, they report a Nessie-like creature that basically will steal fishermen's catch and stuff like that. So we'll get into that too. That's another thing that really interests me. Uh, I want to do some research on it before I, I go start and talk about it. But I've actually had the pleasure of going to Loch Ness, and we'll talk a little bit about that um, here in a second. So the Loch Ness is actually in Scotland. Um, the Loch Ness monster, monster, by named Nessie, large marine creature believed by some people to inhabit Loch Ness Monster in Scotland. However, much of the alleged, alleged evidence supporting its existence has been discredited and is widely thought that the monster is a myth. And I can't, again, I'm not here to say it's real or it's not. You guys have to make up your own minds as to what you think. Again, the links will all be, all these links to these pages I'm going to will be at the very bottom. The links up top are to our stuff, like our, our audio podcast, our paranormal, um, our deepwoodsparanormal.com, uh, which is our, our page. You can find um, not only the podcast, you can find our YouTube channel there. Uh, it's basically a one-stop shop uh, and then our expeditions and our ghost hunts our public ghost, ghost hunts and public expeditions will also be there if you want to check that out and then links to our other social medias and then also my contact information is in there both my cell phone number and my email address are in there uh, if you'd like to be a guest on the show we'd love to have you have you have you seen Loch Ness Monster have you seen any of the cryptids I'm going to talk about um, you know, there's there's supposedly 37 lakes that have um, Loch Ness Monster-like creatures. And uh, we'll get into that a little bit more here and later. But, uh, you know, maybe on the next podcast or whatever, if people really like the this podcast, this is only going to be basically uh, lake monsters and river monsters. So let's continue. Uh, reports of a monster inhabiting Loch Ness date back to incest. incest ancient times i can't talk today notably local stone carvings by the pict p-i-c-t depict a mysterious beast with flippers the first written account appears back in in a 17th century biography of saint columbia according to that work in 565 a.d uh ad the monster bit a swimmer and was preparing to attack another man when Columbia uh, Columbia inter intervened, ordering the beast to go back. It obeyed and 
and over the centuries, only occasional sightings were reported. Many of these alleged encounters seemed inspired by Scottish folklore, which abounds with mythological water creatures. Okay, hold on, let me get a quick drink here. <clears throat> Sorry, my mouth is really dry, it's making it hard to talk. All right, so they're saying it basically is, is some kind of S Scottish folklore. I've seen things on this. Um, I saw a little documentary on this. And Columbia was basically like a religious person. I'm not going to get into that because I don't want to bring that onto this channel. But he came to the shores and he held up his arms and said, you need to leave. And basically the creature left. So that's just the myth or the legend or whatever you want to call it. It says, um, in 1933, the Loch Ness Monster's legend began to grow. At the time, a road adjacent to Loch Ness Monster was finished, um, offering an unobstructed view of the lake. And I've driven on this. You can see it all the way around. This lake is extremely deep, um, and things do kind of bubble up to the surface. I've seen uh, people both try to give Nessie credit, and I've also seen people... Deep trying to bunk, and both sides are are pretty interesting to me. Um, you know, it could it be a log floating on the surface? Maybe. I mean, it's hard to see, so especially if you're way out on the road, and this thing's floating like the middle of the lake. It's really hard to see. Um, there are good sized waves that basically form on the water. Uh, I've been to the castle near it, and I, we looked out for a long time. I had a long lens camera. I had 7,300 lens on. And I kind of scanned around in different places where the monster's been seen. I didn't see anything. So who knows? Like I said, the lock does go to the ocean. And there's other been, been other marine animals that have come in from the ocean into the nest and then left. So, um, you know, to say it, it basically, it can happen is I like can kind of narrow-minded but you know I, I don't know well you have to like i said you have to make up your own mind i'm not 100 sold that it's real it is kind of a cool idea that maybe some kind of prehistoric animal or or uh, dinosaur maybe still is is in these lakes um wouldn't want to meet it in person but i do think it's kind of interesting okay uh, let's see. In 1933, the Loch Ness Monster's legends began to grow at the time. Of, okay, I read all that. Uh, in late April, a couple saw an enormous animal, which they com uh, compared to a dragon or prehistoric monster. After it crossed their car's path, it disappeared into the water. The incident was reported in a Scottish newspaper, and numerous sightings followed. In December of 1933, the Daily Mail commissioned... Um, Ma uh, Madam Marmaduke uh, Weatherall, a big game hunter, to locate the sea serpent. Along the shores, he found large footprints that he believed belonged to a very powerful, soft footed animal about 20 feet or 6 meters long. Um, however, upon a closer inspection, zoologists at the National History Museum determined that the tracks were identical and made with an umbrella that's uh, Umbrella stand or ashtray that had a hippopotamus leg or base. So basically, um, they don't know if he faked it or didn't fake it um, at this point. He was basically uh, discredited, unfortunately. And that's that's why you have to be so careful with the evidence you, you put out there. Uh, nowadays, it's a lot easier to create a hoax because of all the technology and you can make stamps of not only, you know, these kind of footprints, but you can make uh, Bigfoot ones and lizard ones, and you can do all kinds of stuff. So you, you have to be really careful. Um, you know, that's why I like uh, Cliff and and, and uh, the other doctor um, that studies footprints. They're both pretty much scientists. And uh, they know what's real. They know it's fake. All right. So... So in 1934, an English uh, physician, Robert Kenneth Wilson, photographed the alleged creature, the uh, um, iconic image known as the surgeon's photograph, appeared to show the monster's 
small head and neck. Um, basically, it was printed in the in the in the Daily Mail, um, and they basically speculated that it was a creature. Uh, the creature was a plesiosaur, a marine reptile that went extinct some sixty five point five million years ago. Now, again, I talked about this yesterday in the Bigfoot podcast. They found other animals like fish and other things that, and, and different animals out there, uh, different species of animal that they thought had gone extinct a long time ago, but they found them alive today. So to say that this creature still couldn't be around is a little bit of a, I mean, it, again, it's narrow minded. So basically let's move, let's move on. I want to see, okay, here. I want to show you this picture. Oh, cool. Okay, yeah, it does come up. All right. So if you're watching the podcast, this is like an old castle that's in ruins in along the lake. I've actually been up here. I've been up here, um, and I've been able to look out over this section of Loch Ness, uh, and it's beautiful. And uh, essentially, this is looking at it from the other direction from another bank. You can see the castle kind of ruins in the in the distance. But you can see how big this lake is. It's massive. It's not small. And it goes on for a long period of time. Did you miss your deadline to renew your Medicaid coverage? You can still send your completed annual review form to Healthy Connections Medicaid. You may be assigned to another health plan, but you can ask to come back to First Choice within 60 days of renewed Medicaid eligibility. It's your family. It's your choice. First Choice is the right choice. Renew and choose us. Visit selecthealthofsc.com slash renew to learn more. With Lucky Land slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. No, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you Lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Lucky Land Casino. Asking people, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kid's PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. So, let's move on. Okay, so, let me see if this will blow up. Nope, doesn't. This is the surgeon's photo. This was taken in 1934. You can see the neck. You can kind of see the head. You can see it looks like a little bit of a hump and then basically the back portion. Now, they say this is is revealed to be a fake. Um, supposedly, uh, he put a submarine and basically the head of a of a um, like a plesiosaur on the top of this little submarine. It was kind of pushing it around and basically then took a picture of it and claimed it to be a Loch Ness monster. Um, but essentially, they they do they 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 say they debunked it. I don't know if he ever um, said, hey, no, it's fake. Um, but anyways, they, they also think that the Loch Ness Monster could be giant eels. And I talked about that the other day. Here's a picture of a plesiosaur uh, with a long neck, the flippers, the four flippers, and then the tail in the middle of the body. There's only one hump on this one. A lot of people report seeing um, multiple humps. And they report the men's monster being a blackish color. So, I don't know. Could it be a giant eel? Yes, it could. Um, could it be just nothing? That's very true, too. Again, you guys have to make up your own minds as to what you think. Um, this gentleman took some water samples. I know when they were doing an expedition, like a scientific expedition of Loch Ness, they were doing um, sonar. And they lined up several boats, like 30 boats, all the way across the lake. And they were all shooting sonar down at the same time, going across the lake. And at one point, they got a hit on something that basically they couldn't find again. So it was a very large creature. And there's supposedly there's caves 
uh, in the lake, in the lock, where monsters can hide, where things can go swim into. So they're saying that the creature hides out in the caves um, when boats go by or whatever. So let's see if there's anything else interesting. This is a drawing um, that somebody did. And of course, there's been a couple movies. This is back way back in the day of the Loch Ness Monster. It's pretty funny looking. Um, and then, of course, the surgeon's picture. And then they're showing pictures of elephants with their trunks out. What a lot of people don't know is elephants can actually swim uh, in water above their heads. They basically kind of float and they just move their legs back and forth like a dog would, almost like a dog paddle. And they keep their trunks up out of the water so they can breathe. And uh, I've never actually seen a video of it, but it, it's pretty interesting. So what I like about this one. OK, so here's the island of uh, Scotland. Here's the lock here. Here's Inverness. This is where I went to. And uh, essentially, it, it you know, there's there's ways to get out of here. There's You can't see it real clear here, but there's actually channels that go out into the ocean over here. So that's pretty interesting. Again, that's a picture of the castle. And there's not really much here. So that's kind of my take on the Loch Ness Monster. Could it be real? Could it be? Is it fake? I don't know. I can't tell you yes or no. Um, I just think it's interesting. I think it'd be cool if one day somebody actually gets a real good like video of it, maybe out of the water. Um, that's another thing. If those, if that couple from the 1934 that saw it when they were driving down the highway, walking across down the bank on into the water, that could mean it also comes up onto water, out of the water onto land. And uh, now, you know, it's a little bit more commercialized. It's a little bit more, there's a lot more homes probably out in that area. So for someone like that to climb up out of the water, it probably gets seen pretty easy. But back in those days, it wouldn't have. Okay. Let's talk about another famous uh, lake monster. Um, the evidence, this is as evidence of chance, an overview of Lake Champlain's most famous sighting. So this is a video. I have not watched this. Let's let's watch this together. Hopefully you can hear this. There have been various champ sightings and there's different pictures that people have gotten. People have a lot of different theories about what champ could be, but essentially it's the sea monster living in Lake Champlain. From looking at Echo, Whoa. champ comes up a lot. You get the people who are less fun about it and are just like, ah, it doesn't exist. Then you get the, like, oh, my sister saw it or my coworker saw a champ. Some people think that when there are champ sightings, then the person is actually seeing a sturgeon because they, they fit the bill of kind of looking like a sea monster. The ones that we have at Echo are four or five feet long, maybe, but... They can get as big as like 20 feet. I don't know like, what species champ would be. I think it's mostly just fun. <laughs> it being a nice thing about living in Burlington or anywhere along Lake Champlain. Part of the fun of having the champ myth is that you get people to think more about the lake that we all live so close to and that sort of invites you to think more about like how do we take care of the lake and like oh what, what's this type of fish how do we make sure that it's safe uh and doesn't become endangered so i'm gonna interrupt her real quick they're talking about the um sturgeon and if you don't know what a sturgeon is it is a prehistoric fish that is still around from the dinosaur age ish um Surgeons are silvery gray in color. They've got a very bony body. Um, they have like protection all the way back from their head, uh, where their gills is, all the way to their tail. They've got a hard outer shell. Um, and uh, essentially, they can get anywhere from you know eight to 20 or 30. I guess somebody actually saw one that was 30 feet. I don't know if that's ever been proven. 
but um, so I apologize for all the noise a second ago. Something decided to push my light off the top of where it was into the blinds and knock a few other things over while we were talking. So I wish the camera was pointed the other way because we would have seen that fall. Uh, that could be paranormal in nature. Somebody's trying to get my attention. It's probably because the dogs want in and they're scratching at the window. I'm sorry if you can hear that too. But uh, normally they're in while I'm doing the podcast. Now they want in. So, all right, let's keep going. And so I think just saying like, oh, champ isn't real. Kind of besides the point. It's fun to have the myth, even if he's just some big fish. <laughs> they're still like the t-shirts and champ's birthday and like the stuffed animals. Okay, so she's not really talking about anything important. I thought she was going to talk about something, um, you know, about the science behind Champ. But, so let's start here. It says, is there a prehistoric serpent monster lurking in the depths of Lang Champagne? Uh, over the centuries, there have been over 300 alleged sightings of the Lake Champlain monster known as Champ. According to an article by the New England Historical Society, cryptozoologist Nick Venzula estimates that number the number to be closer to 600. Venzula, Venezuela, was recently featured in Lake Champlain Monster, an episode of the CW Network TV show Mysteries Decoded, that explores the legend of Champ that aired August 10th. Uh, there, here, are, let's see. Here are some of the most cha famous Champ sightings. Okay, so let's start here. On July 5th, 1977, Bristol resident Sandri, uh, Sandra Mancine, Massey uh, was trying to have a peaceful vacation with her family. Resting on the shore of Lake Champagne, Mancini was watching her kids splash around in the water as she noticed the creature emerge above the lake's surface. According to a 2003 interview, uh, by the Burlington Free Press. I remember seeing this. Um, I think she, I think I saw some kind of dinosaur that day, she said. It wasn't a fish. No fish can hold itself up six to eight feet out of the water. Before the creature disappeared below the water's surface, she took a picture. Um, she took out her Kodak uh, in, in stomach and captured a possible photo of uh chance the photo is blurry but def uh, definitely shows something um uh, serpent like floating on the surface of the lake it says um the image was analyzed by university of arizona optical science center which confirms that the photo had not been tampered with but could not identify the subject captured in the photo according to a 1981 new york times article since then, others have claimed to capture photographic evidence of Champ, including the 2005 video of a mysterious large ripples in the lake taken by Charlotte's uh, Peter Boy Baudet. Still, uh, Manessy's photo has remained one of the most intriguing and controversial arguments of Champ's existence yet. So, um, they say that Chance is older than the Loch Ness Monster. Let's see. Champ is sometimes referred to as America's Loch Ness Monster, but it's it's legendary um, legend predates that of the Scottish Serpent, according to a 2012 book by historian Robert Bartholomew. Between 1870 and 1930s, the most the the most famous lake serpent in the world was Champ. Uh, the Champlain monster. According to his articles, um, sorry, according accounts of his antics were reprinted in hundreds of newspapers across the country and across the world. Let's see. In the year 1973 was a particularly busy year for Champ. That August, a Burlington marble mill worker named J.P. Farmer told the Burlington Free Press he saw a marine monster while fishing in the uh, Shelbourne Bay. Farmers, farmer described the monster as an animal with a brownish body seemingly, um, seemingly, from, seemingly from 12 to 15 feet in length and having a large head 
um, shaped like a bull's poise, pouts. I don't know what that means. Um, kind of like a snout, I guess. So the same year, Champ was reported spotted by railroad workers, the Clinton County Sheriff's, and the tourist uh, board, the steamship, the W.B. Eddy, who claimed they were nearly knocked overboard by the lake monster. And according to a 2017 article uh, by the Ardenbach Ardenbach, newspaper, Sun County News, these sightings were caught. These sightings of the con of the blah. I can't talk. These sightings caught the interest of B- P. T. Barnum, the founder of the Barnum and Bailey Circus, uh, who in August 19, 1873 posted a bounty of fifty thousand dollars for the hide of the great champagne monster uh, in the New York pace- paper. So let me just read through these. So a lot of people just think it's a serpent. Somebody washing their feet. It's gross. All right. Let's keep going. So there's other lake monsters. Um, Here's a lake monster in Georgia that supposedly washed up. Uh, Let's watch this video. And again, you guys can make up your own minds as to what you think about these things. I'm just basically sharing this with you and enjoying this. And I'm hoping you guys are having a good time listening to me jaw about this. Wolf Island, Georgia. News breaks that a man named Jeff Warren has come across something extraordinary on the beach. Fortunately, he had his phone to record it. Take a good look. The video shows what looks like an odd, washed-up carcass. There appear to be some entrails nearby as if something took a bite out of it. To the rear, there was a long tail, maybe to help propulsion in the water. On the left side, we see what appears to be a flipper, and most interesting what looks like a long slender neck with a small reptilian head. So what is it? In and around the town of Darien, Georgia, in the Altamaha River, there have been accounts of a mysterious monster. So this is Ken uh, Ken Gerhardt. He is a very famous cryptid hunter uh, and researcher, and uh, he's basically giving an interview about um, this monster now. So this is really interesting. He's uh, very credible. And uh, let's just take a listen. Known as the Altamaha, it's typically described as a plesiosaurian type of animal. And like this creature, it fits well into the paradigm of other lake monsters and sea serpents around the world. Okay, so if you guys want to watch the house or a laptop. Sorry, and I came on. Uh, if you guys want to watch this video, again, in the link will be down below for you guys at the very bottom. Uh, you guys come on here and, and make up your own mind. What is that thing? I have no idea. It kind of looks like. Did you miss your deadline to renew your Medicaid coverage? You can still send your completed annual review form to Healthy Connections Medicaid. You may be assigned to another health plan, but you can ask to come back to First Choice within 60 days of renewed Medicaid eligibility. It's your family. It's your choice. First choice is the right choice. Renew and choose us. Visit selecthealthofsc.com slash renew to learn more. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandslots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. You know, uh, please you sore, but it's missing the back fin. You couldn't see if it had fins towards the back of its body. It also looked kind of small. So maybe it was a baby. Who knows? It could have been anything else, too. It could have been something else that we just don't know. A lot of the time, things happen when creatures, or I mean, things um, die in the ocean or in the lake. They tend to bloat. They tend to, you know, get distorted by um, their basic, their, uh, what am I trying to say? They get distorted as they um, basically continue to... um, I can't think of the name word. It's in my head, but I can't say it. Anyways, so they they as they um as they continue to their carcass continues to rot, they will continue to kind of bloat and change. And then as they're being eaten, you know, different things, 
Uh, hopefully somebody in the science community grabbed it, the carcass, and took it and, and studied it. And, you know, maybe there's some answers out there, but they're not really sharing it at this point in time. It's kind of like Bigfoot or any other cryptid or anything else. Uh, it's it's remains hush hush and, uh, and stuff. So anyways, let's keep going. So this is the Lake um, Pepin monster. Uh, it says it fires up people's imaginations and locals' economies. And again, I mean, if you go to any of these places where these creatures have said to be found, um, of course, there's all kinds of dolls and T-shirts and hats and, and statues and everything supporting these creatures uh, because it does help the local economy. And it's kind of fun to think that maybe they do exist. And I'm not saying they do, but I'm just saying it's kind of fun to enjoy the thought that maybe some kind of prehistoric animal still exists out there today. So um, let's let's get into this. It says, now that the ice has melted off of Lake Pepin, uh, Larry Nelson wants to remind people there's something lurking in the blue gearing waters and he's willing to pay you, pay you to prove it exists so basically he's got a, a reward out for this monster it says located on the mississippi river lake pepin is bordered by wisconsin on one side and minnesota on the other in the town of lake city minnesota population of uh just under 5300 um uh, it's basically on the shores of lake pepin um tales of monsters in the lake have been floating around since uh, 1870s. So that's interesting. Supposedly a large serpent-like creature, the monster or peppy, as locals call it, has been seen by everyone from Dakota Indians, Dakota Indians to local uh, vacationers. Now Nelson, the owner of a 125 passenger paddle wheel uh, boat, um, let's see, let me try that again. Now Nelson, the owner of the 125 passenger paddle wheel boat Pearl of the Lake and president of the Lake City Tourism Bureau is reminding people that there's a $50,000 reward to anyone who can prove uh, Peppy exists. Uh, Nelson said he didn't want, he didn't know Nelson said he didn't know the water serpent existed until he saw the creature a few years back. So he's actually seen one. Uh, one night, my wife and I were out on Lake Pepin, and there were no long, no other boats out there with us, he said. All of a sudden, I saw a big wake out there against the current. It was about 100 feet long and uh, a foot and a half high. So I started doing some research, and this is when I heard about Pepe. So essentially, that's what a lot of stories for these lake monsters, especially like uh, Loch Ness. You have um, something pushing against the current. That's why they're saying that it's not a log or it's not whatever. Usually, if there's a if there's a log floating out there, it's going to float with the surface. It's I mean, it's going to if the wind's blowing one way, it's going to go that direction. These things have been seen going against the wind up the current. So that's interesting. Okay, so it says according to Chad Lewis, a cryptozoologist researcher. An author of Pepe, the Lake Monster of Mississippi River, reports that Pepe stretch stretches back to the Dakota Indians. When the Dakota, Dakota, when the Dakota lived in Mississippi area, they decided to trade their, their birch bark canoes for thicker dugout canoes when traveling Lake, lake Pepin in order to protect themselves from the creature living in the lake that punctured their thinner uh, birch canoes. While stories of the lake monster died off in the 1930s and 40s, since uh, the beginning of the 2000s, more people have reported seeing Pepe, Lewis said. Lewis said he's not surprised that a monster could live in the large lake, uh, given its similarity to another alleged uh, monster inhabited a body of water, Loch Ness. Now, there are Loch Ness, mon Loch Ness itself. It's basically, it's a fault zone. Basically, what happened was a glacier melted and filled the fault up with water, and it's extremely deep. 
I don't know exactly how deep you can look it up if you're interested, but there's, like I said before, I think there's 36 or 37 lakes that are just like this. Um, some are actually connected to the ocean. Some are not. Um, but like I said, if you guys want to know more about this, leave a comment down below and we'll take a deeper dive into this. You know, I'm just I'm trying to keep my podcast between half an hour and an hour because after that long, usually we lose people. Actually, after about five minutes, we lose people. But um, if you're interested in this, uh, I will talk more about this. Uh, let's see. And it's term in terms of actual physical dimensions, it's almost identical to Loch Ness. Um, Loch Ness is about 23 miles long and about a mile and a half wide. Uh, Lake Pepin is 22 miles long and about two miles wide. Both are surrounded by the beautiful hills. Even though Lake Ma La La even though Loch Ness is much, much deeper than Lake Pepin, I always state that if you can were dropped out of an airplane into one of uh, or the other, you wouldn't know which one you were in right away. So saying that basically you could, you know, if somebody dropped you into the lake, either lake, you couldn't tell which one was which. Um so again, here's where we kind of look at debunking this. Uh, it says some people believe believe Pepe could be a sturgeon, a long uh, a long prehistoric looking fish that can live for as long as 100 years and weigh up to 200 pounds. But others like uh, Nelson believe there's a sea uh, monster trapped in the inland. All right, so I don't want to keep going on about this. He's it's just going to go on and on and on. Uh, let's look at one last one. So this is in Utah. I've actually never heard of this one. Um, but as you know, we go, we kind of, well, hopefully everybody's kind of learning about different things. It says the legendary tale of Brigham Young and the Bear Lake monster. It says this, uh, desert news broke the story of locals claiming to see the monster in 1868. But what has happened since then? So if you if you're following these, it seems like these creatures date back to the late 1800s or or, or earlier. Um, the reports do, you know. Basically, there could be more reports back further back that we just you know are not on here. So that's pretty interesting because back then people thought they were like monsters and you know whatever else they thought that these things that they're seeing were monsters. They could be ident misidentifications too, just FYI. You know, I'm not saying that these are 100% real. Again, you have to make up your own mind. You have to take all this with a grain of salt. These are just people's accounts. Um, you know, it's kind of like me and Bigfoot. I've seen plenty of Bigfoots, but I don't expect anybody to believe until they've had an encounter of their own. Um, and you have to have an encounter where you can say that couldn't any be anything but a Bigfoot or a, a lake monster. I've never seen a lake monster. I would love to. I'd love to go check this out and spend like months um, researching areas and moving around the lake and trying to document these things. But, you know, just like Bigfoots, I think they're they're just really um, hard to catch. All right. So the Bear Lake Monster made a splash when the desert des uh, des desert, desert news in 1868 published corresponding um Correspondence Joseph Rich's account of the serpent like monster, monsters, excuse me. And uh, he said he had seen multiple that locals had spotted in Bear Lake, which straddles the border of Utah and Idaho. Interesting. I'm going to be pinning all these on my Bigfoot map. Okay. All lakes, caves, and dens have their, uh, have their legends and history, Rich wrote. Uh, before listening, listing secondhand stories of individuals who claim to have seen the monsters. One account uh, reads, hold on one second, let me get it just a simple water. I don't know why my mouth is so dry today. Okay, so it says, after three, uh, about three weeks ago, uh, like, likely early July of 1868, Mr. M.S., sorry, S.M. Johnson, who lives on the east side of the lake at a place called South Eden, uh, about halfway north along the Utah side of the lake, was going around the um, valley settlement six mi miles to the south. 
<clears throat> excuse me, um, six miles to the south of the place when he when he went about halfway, <laughs> he saw something in the lake. This is really written, written really strangely, which at the time he thought to be uh, a drowned person. The uh, road being some distance from the water's edge, he rode to the beach um, as the waves were running pretty high. He thought it would be uh, would soon wash ashore. In, in a few minutes or two, he or three, uh, let's see, in a few minutes, two or three feet of some kind of animal that he had never seen before was raised out of the water. So it says stories of the Bear Lake monster. Um, were located over the next several years. Reminiscence of the Lake Mass Monster disputes broke out in local newspapers and, and public the public became divided on whether or not the monster was real. As locals continued to share the legend, Brigham Young, the second president of this, the Church of Jesus Christ, the Latter-day Saints, took interest in it. Uh, the desert, uh, let's see, the news published the article, an article titled President Young's Trip North that described the church's, lead, church's leaders speaking with locals who firmly believed in the tale. Uh, the church leaders reported, reportedly believed that the locals saw something remarkable and that and that the accounts were certainly, let's see, and that the accounts were certainly of a fish. But they did not uh, rapidly accept the four core tale as true. So essentially, they 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 believed what the people were saying, but they didn't really believe uh, it was real. So that's what they're saying. Uh, the local community's interest in the Bear Lake monster skyrocketed over time. In a personal correspondence, Young suggested perhaps sending a rope of sending a rope to the locals to see if they were they could capture what they were claiming to see. <laughs> Are you going to catch it with a rope? I don't think so. Church church leaders were not the only ones to take an interest in Bear Lake Monster. For, several, for a time, several people in Utah Territory went to Bear Lake to see uh, if this folktale had any merit. They wanted to see if it was true. Uh, okay. So essentially, um, there's been you know stories about this in the news. There's been shows about this, and uh, there's been several uh, monster hunters that have gone and looked for this thing. Cryptid hunters that have gone to look for this thing. Uh, let me stop sharing my screen. So again, are these real? I don't know. I can't say yes or no. I'd have to do a lot more research into them um, to really say that they're real or not. Um, being a paranormal researcher, we research everything. If somebody brings something to our attention, we go and check it out. You know, be it a Bigfoot, a ghost, a haunted location, whatever, a UFO sighting, a river monster sighting, a lake monster sighting. We go and check this stuff out. But, uh, Anyways, that's basically we're going to be doing like all kinds of expeditions. Like I said yesterday on the Bigfoot um, only podcast, we're going to be doing different expeditions. Uh, we got other plans too. Um, we're working on some stuff with some other people, and uh, so yeah, you're going to be seeing some a lot of Bigfoot stuff and other cryptid stuff coming uh, in the in the future. Here, we're going to be doing expeditions to go look for these things. And uh, spending a little bit more time on cryptids than than ghosts. So, anyways, at least while it's cool out, um, if you're interested in going on an ex expedition, they'll be put they'll be posted to our website and probably to our social media pages coming very soon. Um, we're going to be doing an event with a friend um, that will also be posted probably on Facebook soon. Um, that's going to be down in San Antonio. If you're interested in going, uh, let us know. I don't know what the cost is yet. But it's a whole fun event where you get to come in and listen to people talk. Um, and basically, you can meet us and other people that research Bigfoot and other cryptids and stuff like that. So, anyways, we're going to be doing a lot of that stuff this year. Um, 
So, all right, guys, this is getting a little long. Uh, we appreciate you. Please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button while you're on there. If you like the video, uh, that really helps us to tell YouTube, hey, yeah, this is interesting. We want to show more people this. Uh, it really helps us get our name out there. And also, if you'll do me a favor, if you're on a YouTube channel or even if you're on one of our podcast platforms that we're on, please share this podcast with others if you find it interesting. Uh, it really helps us, again, to get new listeners. And we thank you to everybody who's been doing that. We've been getting a lot of new listeners lately, a lot of new viewers on our, ch our YouTube channel. So, and right now it's basically ad free. So any ads you see is all YouTube. We're not posting any ads on our YouTube channel. Um, we want to grow our channel and not have people have to watch ads. Um, so, all right, guys, thank you again. Um, and we will catch you on the next one. Did you miss your deadline to renew your Medicaid coverage? You can still send your completed annual review form to Healthy Connections Medicaid. You may be assigned to another health plan, but you can ask to come back to First Choice within 60 days of renewed Medicaid eligibility. It's your family. It's your choice. First Choice is the right choice. Renew and choose us. Visit selecthealthofsc.com slash renew to learn more. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.